This girl has been dead for a century. When you see what she does, you'll be terrified. Have you ever heard of catacombs? Well, catacombs are just underground cemeteries. In Rome in particular, this practice took place. But later on, other countries adopted this way of burying, and these cemeteries became known as catacombs. Catacombs are complicated because they consist of systems of underground passageways. The catacombs are man-made and holes are carved into the walls. The sacred bodies rest in these holes. Rich people had catacombs with nicely decorated walls. Nowadays, catacombs are often a tourist attraction. In Sicily, where the body of Rosalia rests, the catacombs are a tourist attraction. This girl died a century ago, but what her body still does is purely amazing. This is the video about Rosalia Lombardo. She shocked already many people with what her soulless body does. Rosalia Lombardo The two-year-old Rosalia died nearly a century ago, but the mysteries surrounding this mummy are still shocking. Palmero, Sicily is the home to the catacombs of the Capuchin Order. Nowadays, these catacombs are more known as an extraordinary historical archive and intriguing attraction for macabre tourists. In the 16th century, they carved out these catacombs of limestone caves. They made them because the Capuchin monks did not have enough space in the cemetery. No less than 45 monks did not have a burial place after their death because the cemetery was full. However, later on, they discovered that the bodies had not decayed after being placed in the catacombs. The climate in the catacombs caused this, but the monks thought otherwise. They believed at the time that it was a divine miracle that the bodies survived. They exhibited the dead monks so that people could admire this miracle. People were very impressed when they saw this, and the catacombs became a desired place to be buried. Between the 17th and 19th century, people paid for a place in the catacombs. They dehydrated the bodies on shelves of ceramic pipes, and sometimes they washed the bodies with vinegar. Others got embalmed, and others got placed in closed glass cabins. There was a specific order in which they placed the mummies, according to their social status, gender, and profession. They divided the corridors into categories, such as men, women, children, virgins, monks, priests, specialists, and families. Some remains preserved better than others, and some were put in certain poses. In 1880, the catacombs were full, and the space was closed off. Even after it was closed off, tourists came to visit. In 1911, there was an exception for the body of Giovanni Penettini. He was a vice council member from the United States. The second exception was the body of two-year-old Rosalia Lombardo, who died of pneumonia. She was the daughter of Mario Lombardo, a rich nobleman. He was in the army, and this could have been the reason for this exception. Mario was devastated after his daughter's death. He approached Alfredo Salafia, a Sicilian professor of chemistry, an embalmer and taxidermist of the 1900s, and asked him to embalm his daughter's body. Embalming Rosalia became his finest work ever. Alfredo always made notes when embalming bodies, and with Rosalia, he used a unique technique. The formula he used consisted of one part of glycerin to prevent dehydration, one part of formalin, saturated with zinc sulfate to kill bacteria, one part of zinc chloride to make the body stiff, and one part of an alcoholic solution saturated with salicylic acid. This combination can even kill fungi in meat, and people use it for this purpose. Alfredo first removed the blood from Rosalia's body, and then injected the solution into the body using a gravity injector into the artery of the thigh. As a result, Rosalia's body looks the same as it did on the day she died. 
She lies in a sealed coffin with a glass lid and is also called Sleeping Beauty. For decades, people believed that Rosalia's body was fake and that Alfredo had created a false miracle. To do some research, a documentary team in the year 2000 brought X-ray equipment to the catacombs where Rosalia's body was. The X-rays confirmed that there was indeed a skeleton in the body. Only her brain and skull had reduced in size by half. It was now sure that Rosalia's body was a human. But in 2009, they went a step further with the investigation. The National Geographic crew visited Rosalia to perform an MRI on the body. The crew managed to create a 3D map of her body, both from the inside and the outside. And on the 3D map, all the positions of the organs inside her body were visible. This showed that the organs were all present and still intact. It is hard to believe that Rosalia died almost a century ago because everything is still the same in her body. Many people believe that Rosalia's soul is still present near her body. Another mysterious thing about Rosalia's body is that there are time-lapse videos in which Rosalia repeatedly opens her blue, perfectly preserved eyes and stares at the visitors. How is this possible? Some believe that her soul still possesses her body and that this is why her eyes open. Others ascribe this phenomenon to changes in room temperature or even an optical illusion. The changes in the lighting of the room, like the light coming in through the windows, can cause this. When they placed her in the coffin, her eyes were never completely closed. Rosalia died a century ago, but the things she still does can give you goosebumps. Pentawur He had a coffin made of cedar wood, but besides that, he had no name. They called him the Screaming Man because the mummy had an open mouth, making it look as if he was screaming. Although the coffin is unnamed, it is clear that the mummy was well embalmed. This suggests that this mummy would have been a man of status and that people had respect for him. Research also shows that this man died violently. However, it remained unclear who he was and why he got buried without a name. In Egypt, it was almost impossible to bury a soulless, unnamed body. The Egyptians believed that the body of the deceased could not reach the afterlife without its name. So it was strange that he got buried like this. There must be a mysterious story surrounding his death. To find out more, the historian Susan Redford visited Egypt. She went to the palace of Ramesses III and searched for traces of a missing Egyptian prince, whom people believed might be this nameless mummy. Ramesses was the second prince of the 20th dynasty, and people considered him to be the last great pharaoh of Egypt. Together with his wife Taye, he had a son named Pentuer. Taye was the second wife of Ramesses III. He also had a younger wife who made Taye jealous. During the reign of Ramesses, there were severe economic problems and wars against foreign invaders. The first strike in history took place when Ramesses ruled. The strike started when the craftsmen who built tombs and temples abandoned their jobs because of the lack of food rations. Towards the ends of Ramesses' reign, they set up a harem conspiracy against him. Led by his jealous wife Taye, the conspiracy involved high-ranking military personnel and a priest. Taye wanted her son, Pentawer, on the throne as soon as possible and therefore wanted to get rid of Ramesses. But Taye was confident the people would accept her son as the king easily, so this action would ensure his place on the throne. But Taye's jealousy did not give her the opportunity. The group got condemned after the killing of Ramesses and the story of the conspiracy came to light. They were to be burned alive and their remains scattered in the streets. According to the Egyptians, the punishment would haunt them until after death because they thought that someone could only reach the afterlife if the body was mummified 
and preserved properly. However, the prince escaped this punishment. He got the choice to take his own life. He did this by taking poison. After his death, they performed the mummification of his soulless body differently. He got wrapped in ritually impure goatskin. You can see this as further punishment for betraying his father and they denied him eternal life. Researchers tested the DNA of the screaming mummy. The DNA analysis indicated that the mummy could be a son of Ramesses and therefore may be Pentuer. Both mummies have the paternal Y DNA haplogroup E1B1A and they share half of their DNA. The mysterious screaming mummy, also called the unknown man E, is now marked as Prince Pentawur from the 20th dynasty. Capdwa Capdwa is the mummified body of a two-headed Patagonian giant with a length of 3.6 meters. When you only hear the description, you start to wonder if this giant existed. People still claim that giants existed. Capdwa could be the example of one. At least, this is what some people believe. They discovered Capdwa off the coast of South America. The body is rather unusual, not only because of the two heads, but also because of its size. Is this really a giant? There are two conflicting stories about the origin of this mummy. According to the first story, in the year 1673, Spanish sailors found Capdua on the beaches of Patagonia. They took him in captivity on their ship and tied him to a mast. He got loose but got killed during a fight by a spear in his chest. The spear punctured him completely. After his death, they mummified the body and the mummy went to Great Britain and then to the US. In the US, they used him in a freak show in the second story about the giant, they allegedly found his body on the beach with a spear pierced through his chest. The inhabitants of Paraguay found him, mummified his body, and worshipped him in a religious ceremony. A British captain named George Bickle heard the story of the mummy. He went to Paraguay, stole the mummy, and took it with him to England. He stayed there for a couple of years before traveling back to the American continent and finally ending up in Baltimore. All in all, both stories end in the same way. It all sounds like a fantasy, but at least the mummified body does exist and is on display in a museum in Baltimore, Maryland, in the United States. Now you know what catacombs are and the mysteries surrounding them. It took years to investigate these mysteries but even after research, the mystery remained. Some of these mysteries are still puzzling us, such as Cap Dua. If you are someone who loves to investigate or if you are doing a study in that field, then you would probably like to help with these investigations. Have you ever visited the catacombs and discovered or experienced something mysterious? Tell us in the comments. And don't forget to give us a like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that we can notify you as soon as we upload a new video.